Hello, welcome back everybody. I'm Drone Tech, and today I wanted to talk to you about this entertaining panel discussion I saw from the Paley Center for Media. It's a YouTube channel, the one uh, you can see right there, so you can go check that out later. Uh, but they had a really interesting discussion. I guess the main topic was the presidency, but obviously it got into media bias since we have a bunch of media people here from different spectrums. At some point, the conversation veered into the media's bias uh, when it comes to reporting on Republican administrations compared to Democrat administrations. It's really the kind of stuff I talk about every single day on this channel. At one point, the New York Times reporter that's on this panel jumps in and just denies that there is any bias and that's when the fun starts we're gonna get right into that but first let me implore you to check out preparewithdronetech.com and get your emergency food storage going everyone's talking about food shortages and this is a really good way to get a good peace of mind knowing that no matter what happens you're gonna be okay so remember go check out preparewithdronetech.com Sean, from your perspective, what do you see as the primary responsibility of the media when you're covering the White House in your in your sort of role when you were there? I think the media's responsibility, regardless of administration or frankly beat, is to give people the facts um, and 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 frankly, without opinion. Just real quick, in case you didn't notice, that is Sean Spicer, Trump's former press secretary, one of my favorites, actually. I remember at the time it was hilarious because he would just destroy the press corps and the popular saying at the time was that you can't dice the spice. In any case, Spicer is absolutely correct here. The reason that trust in media has been plummeting for the last 20 years with everybody except for Democrats is because they don't report objectively. They clearly have an agenda and it's right in line with the Democrat party. I've made an entire channel, made a living for the last five or six years now, simply pointing that out on a daily basis. Um, and too often it's, you know, and, and Tim and the Media Research Center and the Newsbusters document a lot of this, but it's it's what they cover, what they don't cover, the tone in which they cover it is crucial. And so, um, and the skepticism, right? So uh, what Biden does is always altruistic. They're seeking a goal that's, that's worthy. Um, everything that Trump did was bad. Uh, nothing was good. Everything, you know, when he screwed something up, it was, it's a disaster when Biden, I mean, we're now on what, I mean, we made fun of infrastructure week over and over again during the, the Trump administration. We're on now on like week 47 in the Biden administration and no one brings it up. I mean, it's, it's well, he's still trying hard from fighting for the American people. It's an embarrassment what's going on in the briefing room. Again, Spicer is dead on here. And I just want to point you to the New York Times reporter. He's the guy with the beard on the left, Patrick Haley. Uh, and he just got this kind of smug look on his face the entire time. Like everything that he's hearing from these people is just completely crazy. It's just a bunch of right wing kookery. But Spicer talks about this in terms of comparing Trump to the way Biden's being covered. But I, I've talked about this often. You can go back uh, to at least Clinton, see how Clinton was covered compared to Bush, how Bush was covered compared to Obama, how Obama's coverage compared to Trump. And you know, after the Bush-Obama transition, I was able to predict exactly how it would happen every time. And it's not that I'm psychic, it's just that this pattern is very obvious. Their bias uh, and complete lack of objectivity, their agenda-driven news coverage is just so obvious. And it's for all the reasons and more that Spicer just pointed out here. When we're talking about Democrat policy, the media reports on it as if they are salespeople, you know, trying to sell the And Democrats expect this. And this is why you saw Biden and Pelosi and a couple other Democrats actually come out and say that the reason they're not able to pass this Build Back Better bill is because the media hasn't been selling it enough. Yet when it's a Republican administration, suddenly the media is very adversarial. Suddenly they want to dig into every policy and they want to see how it's going to affect everything. They really want to get, get into it. And they say that, hey, we're just holding truth to power. You know, when I used to, during the Bush years, when I used to ask people like, why is it that they're covering Bush so much more critically than they did Clinton? And I would constantly hear uh, responses like, oh, well, it's because the Republicans are the ones in power. Oh, okay, well, all right. Well, then we get into the Obama administration where Democrats had a majority, and suddenly that reasoning's right out the window, and suddenly they're just pushing the agenda again. I think anyone objectively who can look at a clip of the press briefing between when I was there, frankly, any one subsequently, and what it is with Jen is is there's it's not yes. it, it's not something that I think is debatable. Yeah. Um, the press when um, when Patrick was on the reporting side was clearly came in in an adversarial role. I I don't think journalists I mean journalists are there to 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 present stories and facts and say this is what happened. Here's the who, what, where, when. They have crossed that line 
Um, in Trump, it was very much advocating why he was wrong. And in the Biden administration is why he was right. This is absolutely correct. This is why during the Trump years, you saw this just barrage of fact checks. You know, you had Washington Post and the, the, the media constantly touting that 10,000 fact checks on Donald Trump. And it was very obvious to see what was going on there. They throw out this enormous number and that's all people really see. When you start to actually dig down into these fact checks, you found that it was a lot of times just like semantic word games or maybe Trump was just wrong about something. Maybe he like it was obvious that he misstated like a, uh, a data point or something like that. And yes, there were some lies in there because guess what? All politicians lie. The Washington Post fact checks, so many of these that weren't even actual lies. It was just like disagreement or semantic word games. They would then attribute that to like hundreds hundreds of different, because Trump was out there speaking a lot, and they would attribute those to just all these different statements. Then after the election, we started seeing these news uh, reports where they were saying, oh, well, you know, you might not see a bunch of fact checks like we did of uh, of Biden. It's not it's not because we're, you know, that we're biased and we're just covering for him. No, no, don't, don't think that. That's not it. It's just because Joe Biden doesn't lie, which is, of course, absurd because Joe Biden is known for lying. He's been known for lying since I started paying po attention to politics. Even during the run-up to the election in 2016, the his Democrat Biden's Democrat opponents were all calling him out for his lies. But then he gets elected, and suddenly we just have to pretend like that's not the case. There's such a thing as popular opinion anymore when it comes to the president and what we're seeing today. Well, it's an interesting question to ask, given how public opinion polling for the current president has shown uh, him to be off a cliff in terms of what what uh, the people want and how that relates to media coverage. Right. And is there media touting those numbers every day? No, they're not. You remember any time a low poll came out for Trump, it was everywhere on every headline. You turn on the TV and that's all they were talking about is on the lower thirds is on the crawler. That's all you heard. That's all you saw. But with with Biden. Not at all. And you could have predicted this. I want to just point out that there is a group of people that does believe they are treated fairly by the media. The most recent Gallup poll showed that the group of people who three out of four believe they are treated fairly by the media, that's Democrats. Only 9% of Republicans feel that their views are represented fairly by the media. Yep. And you know what? That has been the case for at least the last 20 years, folks. I mean, I... I'll post a poll up on the screen when I go into editing here to show you this. But this is nothing new. And they've really tried to blame Trump for the lack of trust in media. All through the Trump years, they were doing that. Brian Stelter still, to this day, makes that claim. It's not their fault. Of course not. It's just Trump because he, he said the media was the enemy of the people. Even though the fact is Trump was elected because of the media, in large part, because of how the media is, how corrupt they are. They talk so much about democracy. How can you have a functioning democracy if instead of a free press that's supposed to hold all power to account, you have a giant propaganda machine that is in the corner of one party. They are the extension of one party against the other while constantly demonizing to extreme insane links to the point now where you have people like Nicole Wallace who claim to be a Republican out there actually calling for the government to use violence against people they disagree with politically. Back to the polls, as Biden's poll numbers continue to drop, the media will continue to downplay it. They'll cover it a little bit, but not a lot. Nothing like what we would see if it was a Republican. That's for good reason. And it's because our media in the last five years, and this is directly related to their posture toward the office of the president under the current Right. And I just also want to point out again that independents are right there with conservatives and Republicans with their confidence and trust in the media plummeting. I think for this conversation to have any value or meaning, we do have to remember what the press did with the current with the previous administration. And I think about the current administration, the first press conference, I think, was March 25th. It was embarrassing. It was embarrassing, like as a journalist, to watch what the media did gently asking questions. You know, you were so kind and that's why we have a border crisis, right, Mr. President? It was unbecoming of anybody who thinks that they're professional. Compare that with the previous office holder where the first press conference I think was before the inauguration and it was about a delusional conspiracy theory that Donald Trump had stolen the 2016 election by colluding with Russia. This became the main focus of much of our media for years. 
every day. They dropped out news stories. I don't know if they believed this delusional conspiracy theory that Donald Trump stole the election or if they pretended to. Either way, that's why they don't have any credibility outside of their co-partisans. Yeah, and just to point out, we knew that that was, a, that was all crap back when it happened. And just think about it for a second, what they did. They, they created this grand conspiracy theory to try and undo an election because they didn't like the results. And yet they say today that if you don't believe Joe Biden was legitimately elected, uh, that that means you're uh, a domestic terrorist attacking America's democracy. They literally got Russian disinformation, spread it throughout the government, its institutions, and the country in order to undo an election they didn't like the results of. And now we know that Durham and his investigation is now arresting the guy who they actually went to for the information in the Steele dossier, charging him with lying to the FBI. And you may remember there was a Democrat lawyer, I believe, who was just recently arrested uh, for the exact same thing. And guess what? This all goes back to Hillary Clinton and the DNC, who paid for this opposition research that turned out to actually be Russian disinformation. Once again, they are all guilty, completely guilty of what they accuse us of. Either way, that's why they don't have any credibility outside of their co-partisans. This is a major crisis for our country because we know we need a free press to preserve liberty. We know we need a press that holds people responsible. And they can't move from cartoonish hostility yes. to gentle sycophancy oh based on who's holding the office. Cartoonish hostility is such a good word for it. I mean, what do we always say? That it's almost like they're putting on a theatrical performance, right? And that's what it is. And then you get a Democrat in office and it's just like a completely different thing. The, the press briefings are a great example of that because we all remember that the press briefings used to be pretty fun and entertaining because the press would just go insane. It just it was a bunch of left wingers uh, triggered and just losing their minds to like she just said, it's just this gentle sycophancy. They go in there and it's like they're all a bunch of buddies. Now, next up, that New York Times reporter is going to respond. And this is where it gets really good. I don't think any media organization in business today really can survive, you know, at a level of covering the country, uh, you know, if they're not trying to tell the stories in a good faith way, uh, you know, of people on, on both sides. I, I understand people see it differently, but. Hold on, hold on a second. I mean, more and more, and, and in fact, uh, after Biden won the election, uh, the media started putting out uh, all these stories about how objectivity is bad. We heard uh, big people like Lester Holt come out and say that, oh, you know, objectivity is not such a great thing, actually. And several other ones. I'll go find some more and, again, put them into the video and editing. But And I'm pretty sure there were some people from the New York Times. But that's a thing. And they started doing that as a sort of cover for what was blatant uh, bias and partisanship in their stories. It's just this guy is just really... Uh, showing this very trademark lack of uh, self-awareness that we constantly see on the left. And I think that he knows he's full of it and that he knows he's lying. And you'll see what I mean here in a second because he gets called out for uh, this excuse that he's making that, oh, well, I don't think we'd be in business if we weren't trying to tell both sides of the story. Uh, he gets called out for that and his response is very illuminating. Uh, that yeah. is, that's really the intent. Patrick, I don't think you. that's true, honestly. Okay. The whole idea that the New York Times and the Washington Post under Trump had marketing campaigns that were going after the anti-Trump vote. They used slogans like democracy's dying in darkness. The truth is more important than ever. They were clearly saying we are going to build a subscriber base of people who do not agree with the current trend. I don't think anybody believes that the New York Times or the Washington Post are here to represent all of us and that's the problem with the Tim, what do you what do you have against okay. democracy what do you have against truth i don't i don't understand <laughs> you right. I, uh, you I harping on the motto it's, it's a little strange oh oh what do you have against democracy that's immediately what he goes for it's just like what we hear in the media constantly if you oppose or criticize the left democrats or their media then you hate democracy tim graham that was making that point the guy in the upper right there by the way he is with newsbusters.org you should definitely go check it out but patrick haley's response here is just a slap in the face like the point that tim was making here is that this sort of soaring journalistic standards hard-hitting just the facts news 
That that sort of model only pops up when there's a Republican in office. Suddenly, when a Democrat's in there, it's like they're just an extension. They're not they're not doing that same hard hitting uh, uh, news. They're not doing those same fact checks. During a Democrat administration, most of the fact checks that you're going to see from guys like Pat Patrick Haley or from the New York Times are going to be in defense of Democrats. It'll be like, oh, they're making this criticism of Joe Biden. And that's not true. This is the truth. Something that you will never see them doing under a Republican administration, especially not the Trump administration. Like there was never a New York Times fact check on the very fine people lie. No, they actually helped to perpetuate that lie. And just a side note here, I love the look on the moderator's face when Tim Graham starts getting into it with the New York Times reporter. You can tell he so desperately does not want to talk about this topic and would like to move on. Before I go, I do want to let you all know about my new Let's Go Brandon t-shirts and hoodies. You can find the links for that in the description or pinned comment. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and let me know what you think in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.